So in order to show all the orders on this profile page, I'll go back to the application in the users routes file here at the bottom or not at the bottom here at the top actually where I get the profile. I want to well retrieve the order data for that user. Well, in order to do that, I'll need this order import that are a lot of orders aren't that. So like this, this order model, and then I can use the model here to directly on it use the find method, which is just a mongoose way of querying the database, basically doing the same thing I was doing here in the shell client with db.orders.find. I'm doing it here in my node.js code. Now I don't want to find all orders though. I only want to find orders for the logged in user. And you see them that I'm checking for the user being logged in here by adding the middle word. So I can be safe or I can be sure that the user will be logged in if I reach this code. Therefore, I'm passing an object to the find method where I say the user field, remember my order model has this user field here, which will be a user ID in the end. This user field should well be the same as my logged in user. And that's the cool thing. I can use the logged in user passport stores on my request to compare it with the user field in the database and Mongoose will do all the rest. Of course, my logged in user here probably has more than just the ID, but Mongoose is clever enough to figure out that it needs the ID from this logged in user and compare it to the, well, user, which the user field, which just stores an ID in the end. So with that, I'm finding only the orders of a user. Then I'm setting up my callback where I either get an error or all the relevant orders. And I'll quickly check if I do get an error here. In this case, I'll make it simple and just return a response where I write error to the screen. So really not the best error handling here, but well, it really shouldn't fail. And well, I want to focus on the success case here. So we were successful, we retrieved the order. What's next? Well, I want to get the card from that order. I will therefore create a new variable card and then I will loop through all my orders. Why do I need to do that? You'll see it in a second. I'll use the for each loop to do something with each order in this array of orders because of course I get, or at least theoretically, I can get more than one order if the user well ordered more than or made more than one purchase. So here I'm looping through all the orders and then I want to manipulate each order. I want to change something there. I want to fetch my card and I want to create a new card on each new or on each order. Remember, I have it stored in the database, but I want to create a card based on my card object here. And that's the same approach I used here in the index.js file in the routes folder all over the place, where I generated a new card every time we were reaching a new route. I want to generate a new card for each order here too because I will need access to the generate array method, which is set up in this card object or model here. And I need this generate array method to give me an array of items, which I will then need in my user profile, where I want to output my order, order data, which should not only be the total price of the order, but also the items of the order, exactly like they were stored in the card. That is why I need the same behavior as I needed in the card related routes in the index.js file. So enough of the talking card will be a new card here for each iteration. And for this new card, I will pass order dot card because again, I'm storing this card on each order in the database. Then I want to set order items. This is a new field I'll add to have some convenience to conveniently access all my items. I'll set this field equal to card generate array like this. So this method here will return me an array of the items in a card and then I'm storing them in a new field items on the order. So with that in place, I can then 
render my response and I want to render the user slash profile view here. Basically this one, so I'm just pulling this into my callback. And of course I need to pass an object to that view and the object should hold my orders, which I can then use there. So back to the profile view, to the profile HPS file, pretty empty right now. Well, we're going to change this. First, I'll add a bootstrap row here. Then I'll add some bootstrap columns to give this some, well, nicer look or a better look. So let's do this like this maybe. Of course, you can style this however you want to style it. Then here, yes, this will still be my user profile. Then add a horizontal line. And then let's say add a heading which says my orders, something like that. Now here I want to loop through all my orders and I want to display them in a certain way. I'll head over to getbootstrap.com to pick the right styling basically. And I want to make each order a panel and to be precise a panel with a footer where here in the footer I want to have the total price and in the content field here, I want to have the individual items of that order. So I'm copying this panel code here from the bootstrap page and I'll, and I'll enter it here below the my, my orders heading. And as I said here for the content, I want to have the items of the order. So this shall be a list group. And I want to have a list group with a batch because in the batch, I want to display the overall price of the items here. These items will be grouped as they were in the shopping cart. So if I purchased a certain book twice, then here will be the price for two items of that book, but we will only have one row for the book. So I'm placing that in here. And with that, it's time to add the required loops. I'll first add a loop around the panel because again, each panel should be one order. So I'll enter the each block here and then quickly just copy all that code. Cut it, enter it here like so. And thereafter I'll add, or here first I want to loop through all my orders of course. And then I want to loop here inside my unordered list. I want to loop through all my, what? All my items, of course. So this is the keyword I can use for the currently active order, since that is my outer loop. I'm looping through all the orders. And then here, the items field. Remember the items field? That's this field I created here in the user.js file. So here I'm looping through all these items, have my new, for each loop here. Also copy all of that, cut it and paste it in here, like so. And then I can go to well, adding the relevant data. So here in the footer, as I already said, I want to output the total price. So this will be dollar and then, well, the price. And I can access the price on my order. So using this again, because I'm in the for each loop here this cart and then the total price field on the cart. I also want to enter the total price for each item group in this batch here. So I'll also do that here again. I can use this now I'm in the inner for each loop, but this is still available here. So this will be this price. And then here I also want to output the title. So this shall be this item title and thereafter I also want to output the quantity. So the last field I want to enter here shall be this quantity and these are all fields available on my items here as set up here in my card model, right? So here I'll just add units after it. With that, I'll restart my server again, go back to my application reload my profile page and get an error because 
Yeah, because cart is not defined, well, that's certainly something we should do. So in the user chess file, I'll also need to import my cart model here because I'm using it in the, uh, in the profile route here, here where I create a new cart. So yeah, good catch. Restart the server, reload the profile, and we see the order here, $60 and then the individual items as we bought them. Just some fine tuning maybe, here the, the total price. We could also wrap this in strong tags, maybe like this, oops. Just to make it look a little bit nicer and then put total price in front of it, maybe something like that, but that's just styling. Great, so let's make another purchase. Let's say we buy each game once, like so. Go to the checkout page, copy that dummy credit card data, enter all the dummy data here, fill out the form, submit it. Your card number, oh yeah, that is not a card number. I do agree with that, so maybe Add our correct card number here, submit it, go to the user profile and we see the second purchase we made here. Great, so with that we got the working shopping cart. We're able to add items to the cart to then check out. We ensured that only logged in users can check out. We're actually saving the orders to the database. Of course, we do make charges using Stripe. And finally, we also display all the orders a user made on his profile page. 